Good day, Grade Tens. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at empirical and molecular formula. Empirical and molecular formula, what they are and how do we derive them. So, empirical formula. Empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms within a compound. For example, glucose would be CH2O. Now, this is in comparison to a molecular formula, which is the actual number of each atom present in the compound. Glucose's full molecular formula is C6H12O6. So you can see here, if you divide all of these numbers by 6, the simplest whole number ratio is 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens, and 1 oxygen. Carbon divided by 6 is 1. Hydrogen divided by 6 is 2, and oxygen divided by 6 is 1. So, here's a couple of examples here. And you can see, for example, with water, water, the empirical formula is the same as its molecular formula because it is its simplest whole number ratio. But most of these other ones, or all of these other ones, in fact, oh, except for this last one here, the molecular formula is different to the empirical formula. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the molecular formula. So you're just dividing by a number to get the simplest whole number ratio. What do these mean? So let's have a look at empirical formula and how we can derive the empirical formula from information that's given. So there's a couple of steps involved in deriving empirical formula. The first one is to write down the symbols of the elements present. Step two is to write down the mass of each element. Now, you'll sometimes be given the mass as percentage, so just convert percentages to grams. You're assuming then that the mass of a sample is 100 grams, which ratio-wise, it'll still be fine. Third step is to convert masses to moles because these ratios are in mole ratios. The fourth step is to find the simplest whole number ratio and you do this by dividing all the numbers of moles by the smallest number of moles. And last but not least, if necessary, convert all of those numbers to whole numbers. I'm going to show you some examples which will make this make a bit more sense. So here's an example question. A compound of sulfur contains 2.4% hydrogen, 39% sulfur, and 59% of oxygen by mass. Calculate the empirical formula of the compound. So, I've put my question up here. These are the steps I need to take. So, step one, write down the symbols. I've got hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. So I'm going to write those symbols at the top so that we've got columns. I'd like to work down in columns. So the next thing we need to do is write down the masses of each of these elements. Hydrogen is 2.4%. Remember with percent we can just convert those to grams. So for hydrogen, 2.4 grams. That's assuming that we've got 100 grams as a sample. It doesn't matter because it's all ratio based. So 2.4 grams for hydrogen, 39.0 grams for sulfur and 58.6 grams for oxygen. Now we want to convert these values into moles. We do that by using number of moles equals mass divided by molar mass. So for hydrogen it's 2.4 divided by hydrogen's molar mass which is 1 and we get 2.4. For sulfur it'll be 39 divided by its molar mass which is 32 which equals 1.2 and oxygen, 58.6 divided by its molar mass, which is 16, and you get 3.7. Now the last step is the easiest step because you're just finding the ratio, and all you need to do is divide each of these three numbers by the lowest number that's there. So the lowest number in this sample is 1.2, so I'm going to divide all of these by 1.2. So for hydrogen, 2.4 divided by 1.2 equals 2. Sulfur, 1.2 divided by 1.2 equals 1. 
and for oxygen, 3.7 divided by 1.2 equals 3.1. So this is my ratios here. So to work out my empirical formula now, I know that I need two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one sulfur, and three oxygens. With these numbers here, if they're a slight decimal place out, just round them to their nearest whole number. So we get an empirical formula for this compound of H2SO3. So question 25 in your booklet, uh, pause the video now, have a little go at it. It'll make more sense if you work through those step by step. So pause it, have a go, and I'm going to do a work solution. Okay, so again, here's my question, and we need to follow these steps. So the first two things we've got are write down the symbols, so it's carbon and oxygen, carbon and oxygen. The second thing we want to put masses, they're in percentages, so I'll just change those to grams. So I've got 27.3 grams for carbon and 72.7 grams for oxygen. We need to convert these masses to moles in step three. N equals mass over molar mass. So for carbon, 27.3 divided by its molar mass, which is 12, which equals 2.27. Oxygen, it'll be 72.7, its mass divided by its molar mass, which is 16, which equals 4.54. Working out the ratio again, we just divide by the smallest number that's there, which is 2.27. So for carbon, 2.27 divided by 2.27 equals 1. For oxygen, 4.54 divided by 2.27 equals 2. So our empirical formula will have one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So it's CO2. Now remember this could be carbon dioxide, but it's an empirical formula. So it's the lowest, simplest whole number ratio. Molecular formula. Okay, so molecular formula can be determined from its empirical formula, but only if its molar mass is also known. And we use this formula here. The molecular formula is equal to a whole number times its empirical formula. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Use glucose as an example again, because you're already familiar with that. So glucose, its molecular formula is C6H12O6. Its empirical formula is CH2O. That's just dividing all of them by 6. So if we go back the opposite way, the molecular formula is its empirical formula multiplied by the whole number 6, which is exactly what we just said here. The molecular formula is the empirical formula multiplied by the whole number. So what we need to be able to work out is what this whole number is, and that's what I'm going to show you. So using glucose as an example, if the question states what is the empirical formula of glucose, oh, sorry, the empirical formula of glucose is CH2O, what's its molecular formula? The first thing we need to know is or we can work out is the molecular or the molar mass of CH2O of the empirical formula and that equals 30 grams per mole. Now I've just worked that out by adding 12 plus 16 plus 2 times 1 and that'll equal 30. Now we have to get told in the question what the molar mass of the molecular formula is, otherwise we can't work this out. So in the question here, it's telling you that it's 180 grams per mole. So all we need to do is find out how many units of this fit into this. So the number of CH2O units in the compound equals the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. In this case, that equals 180 divided by 30, which equals 6. You can clearly see that 6 
of these 30 gram per mole units are going to fit into the 100 gram per mole unit of the entire compound. So if we've got the number 6 here, we just need to multiply that by its empirical formula and we will get the molecular formula which is C times 6 which is C6, H2 times 6 which is H12 and oxygen times 6 which is O6. If, oh, here's another example question for you. So the empirical formula of hydrazine is NH2. What's its molecular formula? Okay. So, again the question needs to tell you what the, molec or what the molecular formula's um, molar mass is. And it tells you here that it's 32 grams per mole. You can then calculate that the empirical formula's molar mass equals 16 grams, so 14 for the nitrogen and 1 each for the hydrogen. Once you've got this information, you can continue with the question by just dividing it as we did before. So the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, which equals 32 divided by 16, which equals 2. So there's two of these NH2 units in the compound, so the molecular formula equals 2 times NH2, which equals N2H4. 2Ns, and H2 times 2 is H4. If you're feeling confident, have a go at this question here. I'll give you a hint. Make sure you work out the molar mass of CH, and you're told what the molar mass of the entire compound is. So you should be able to work that out. So give this a pause, have a go, and I'm going to work through the solution for you. Okay, so let's have a look. We can work out the molar mass of CH, it just equals 12 plus 1, which equals 13 grams per mole. We're told the molar mass of the compound, which is 78 grams per mole, which is in the question there. So all we're doing now is dividing the molar mass of the compound divided by So all we're doing now is dividing the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, which is CH. So 78 divided by 13, which equals 6. So we've got 6 NH2. So all we're doing now is working out how many CH units are in the compound by dividing the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula CH. So it's 78 divided by 13, 6. So there's 6 CH units in the compound. 6 of these will make up one of the whole compound. So the molecular formula equals 6 times CH which equals C6H6. So you should now be able to complete the rest of the booklet questions, which are numbers 25 to 28, and move on. Right, great tens. Um, I think by now you should know how to do and work out empirical formula, molecular formula, know the difference between the two. Be sure to do the assessments at the end of the section to make sure that you have practiced enough and you know exactly how to handle these questions in exams. Thank you. Enjoy your day.